This lesson discusses the probability of the union of two events. Number one, the Venn diagram below shows the 10 students in Mr. Cho's class. The diagram shows the memberships for the chess club and the computer club. Note that Ali is outside the circle since he is not a member of either club. So there he is outside there. He's not in the chess club and he's not in the computer club. Let A denote the event the student is in the chess club. So I put an A by that. Let B denote the event that the student is in the computer club. So put a B by that so just to help keep tra track of things. Letter A, find the probability of the events below. Write each answer as a single fraction. So what's the probability of being event A or being in circle A? Well, if you add them up, there's six names out of a total of 10 names because they told us that there were 10 names. In addition to that, you could add up all the names down here and you'll find that there are 10 names if you add them up. So 6 tenths, which is 3 fifths, you have to reduce it. The probability of B, so being in circle B, there's 5 names in B out of 10, which reduces to 1 half. The probability of, B, of A and B happening. Now the word and is intersection or an upside down U, so the probability of A and B is what they asked for. Or we can write it as the probability of A intersection B, and it's when they have to be in both. And in both of them were Chan and Elsa. They're in both the computer and the chess club. So that's two of them out of ten, or a fifth. Then the next one wants to know how about R, if they're in the one or in the other one. Or means union, U. So the probability of event A or B, or the probability of A union B, is everything or all of it. So intersection, they need to be in both, whereas union, it's just everything there, so it's both circles. So I sketched green over it, so it's both circles. And in both circles, there are nine names out of ten. Only Allie is outside that's not in the circle. So the next one wants us to do some math. They want to take the probability of A, which is three-fifths, plus the probability of B, one-half, subtract that from the probability of A and B, which we found was a fifth. Do the math on it, you get nine-tenths. Um, again, if you're not good with doing your fractions, you can always use your calculator. So we've got um, 3 fifths, so 3 divided by 5, plus 1 half, minus 1 fifth, hit enter, and remember go to math, enter, enter, and it'll change it to a fraction for you, so 9 tenths. So they want to know on the last one here, select the probability that is equal to the probability of A, plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B. Well, that's what we just did, and that was 9 tenths, which was the same one as, same answer as the one before it, which was A or B was 9 tenths. So it's equal to the one that was the or. Number two, six balls numbered one to six are placed in a bag. Some of the balls are gray and some are white. The Balls number two and five are gray. The balls numbered one, three, four, and six are white. A ball will be selected from the bag at random. The six possible outcomes are listed below. Note that this that each outcome has the same probability. So that means getting either, any one of the balls would be one out of six. The possibility of getting ball number two is one ball out of six. The possibility of getting a ball number three is also one out of six. All right, so going down below, they'd like to know what's the probability of getting a white ball. So that's one, three, four, and six. So that's four on a six or two thirds. What is the probability it's an even number? That'd be two, four, six. Those are all even numbers, which is three on a six or a half. What's the probability the ball is white and it is an even number? So it has to be both things. It's the intersection of it. So they have to be white and it has to have an even number on it. That's only the number four. Four is white and it's also even. Oh, and so is six. Six is white and also even. So that makes two of them out of six or a third. The next one says the word or. Probability of white or even. So or is all of it. It can be either one. It could be white or it could be even, but it doesn't have to be both of them. So, so white was one, three, four, and six. And then even also includes the number two. So it was all of them but the number five, because number five is odd and it's gray. So that was five out of six. So they want you to plug things in again down here. So the probability of A up here was two-thirds. The probability of event B was one-half. And subtract that from A and B. 
A and B was right here. It was a third, and you get five out of six. So which one of these up here also equals five out of six? It was the last one with the word or in it. So check off the or there. On the next page. Number three, it says on A and B be events, be two events. Suppose that the probability of A is 0.56 and B is 0 0.06. First one, find the probability of A or B. So that would be the union of it or all of it. And it says they're mutually exclusive. If they're mutually exclusive, that means they have no overlap at all. So the overlap of the two of them are where or where probability of A and B both occur is zero. So the, what's the probability of A or B? Well, you just add up the probability of A and the probability of B. And then you gotta subtract off the probability of A and B. But again, if it's mutually exclusive, there's no overlap, so it's zero. So all you have to do is add up the probability of A plus the probability of B, and you get 0.62. The next one wants to know what if they're independent. Well, if they're independent, it doesn't mean that there isn't any overlap. So since there might be overlap, you have to take the two circles and then subtract off the overlap at it so that you don't count it twice. Like going back here on this picture, um, if you add the two circles together, you're going to be adding up 6 plus 5, which is 11. But there's not 11 people in there because you counted Chang and Elsa twice because you counted both circle A and circle B, so you counted... Chang and Elsa two times when you did that. So that's why you have to subtract off the overlap of those two people. So A and B is A plus B and then subtract off the overlap of them. So A is 5 plus B, which is also 5, is 10 minus their overlap. No, no, wait, wait a minute. A is 6. There's 6 names and then B is 5 names. So 6 plus 5 is 11 and then minus the overlap there of the 2 in the middle make 9. So that's how many are in the two circles, nine. All right, so that's why we're subtracting off the overlap of it, because if you don't subtract the overlap of it, then you're counting the middle of it twice where, where they have in common. So the next one said they're independent, but it didn't say they're mutually exclusive. If they're mutually exclusive, again, there's no overlap between the two circles and the overlap zero. On this one, it just said they were independent. Independent, again, doesn't get, guarantee there's no overlap. So we're subtracting off the overlap on it. And to find that, what you do is multiply the probability of A times the probability of B. So A or B now is add up A and B and then subtract off the overlap by multiplying the two numbers together. And we get 0.5864. Okay, question four. On a particular day, a restaurant that is open for lunch and dinner has 131 customers. Each customer came in for one meal. An employee recorded at which meal each customer came in and whether or not they ordered dessert. The data are summarized in the table below. Suppose a customer came in that day from that day is chosen at random. Answer each part. Do not round compu intermediate computations and round your answers to the nearest hundredth. Okay, what's the probability the customer came in for lunch? Well, 21 came in for lunch and got dessert, and 21 came in for lunch and got no dessert. So 21 plus 8 people came in for lunch out of a total of, they said, 131 people came in that day for lunch and dinner. So for lunch, 21 plus 8 out of the total 131 divide, rounded to the hundredths, that's the 2, and after the number 2 is the number 1, and so it doesn't round it up. It stays 2. The number, remember, after it has to be 5 or more, and it's not. So it's just point twenty two. Next one, what is the probability that a customer came for lunch or ordered dessert? So lunch or they ordered dessert. So lunch was 21 and 8. But the, what about dessert? 34 of them came in for dinner and got dessert. So it's all three of those added together. 21, 8, and 34 divided by 131, which made 0 0.4809 or 0.48 to the nearest hundredth. The last one. At a certain pizza par parlor, 49% of customers ordered onions, while 40% of the customers ordered sausage. 23% ordered both onions and sausage, so the overlap of onions and sausage is 23 
So people that ordered onions, 23 of those also, or 23% of those also ordered sausage. So what I did was took 49 minus 23, which left 26. So 26 just got onions, where 23 got onions and sausage, and together they add up to the whole circle of people that ordered onions, or 49%. Likewise, over here, 40% ordered sausage, but then 23% of them in the overlap also ordered onions. So subtract 40 and 23, that's 17. So they want to know, what's the probability the customer came in and ordered onions or sausage or even both? Well, that'd be all of it added together. So 26, 23, and 17 added up is the possibility of all of it, or 0.66. All right, the questions repeat now in your homework. If you need some help, remember you can always email me and we'll set up some time.